The Cleveland Guardians entered the 2022 season as the youngest team in all of baseball and 28th in the league in payroll. Historically, young teams don't win a lot and teams with low payrolls don't win a lot, which is why it makes no sense that this team just won the AL Central for the first time since 2018. Before I get into it, welcome back to The War Room, a channel where I discuss all things baseball related. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and let's get straight to it. Prior to the 2022 MLB season, there were people, myself included, who were counting the Guardians out in this division, and honestly there was a good reason to do so. The White Sox were supposed to be not only atop this division, but one of the best teams in the American League and a World Series contender. This team is stacked with Dylan Cease, Jose Abreu, Tim Anderson, Luis Robert, Eloy Jimenez, and plenty of others. Then there was the Minnesota Twins, who have Byron Buxton. They signed all-star shortstop Carlos Correa in the offseason, have one of the best contact hitters in the league in Luisa Rise, and added Gary Sanchez and Gio Urshela via trade. If everything went well, this team could have easily snuck into the playoffs too. Then there's the Detroit Tigers, who have sucked for the past six years, but because they signed Javier Baez in the offseason, there were some who did think the Tigers would be better than the Guardians this year and make a run at the division title, believe it or not. Finally, there's the Kansas City Royals, who have young talent with Bobby Wood Jr. and MJ Melendez, plus established players like Salvador Perez, Whit Merrifield, and Andrew Benintendi. The preseason predictions on screen right now are laughable when we see them today, and that's because regardless of how these teams were projected to finish, all four of these teams had their stock going up, while the Guardians were trending down. So what happened? Chicago dealt with injuries, terrible management, and bad play on the field. They're arguably the biggest underachievers this year, and are struggling to play 500 baseball. The Twins spent their fair share of time in first place this season, but they are 6-15 since September 4th and prove they aren't built for October just yet. The Tigers and Royals both suck yet again, and people who thought these teams would be good have to chalk it up as an awful take. So that leaves one team, the young and broke Cleveland Guardians. The truth is that no matter how bad a division is, someone has to win it. And competing against bad teams certainly helps, but that's what's so interesting about Cleveland. They were supposed to be one of these quote unquote bad teams. They weren't supposed to be the ones to step up and snag the division title away from everyone else. So how did they do it? We're going to take a look at three hitters and three pitchers. First, we have to mention Jose Ramirez. He signed a seven year, $141 million deal to stay in Cleveland in the offseason. He's the only player on this roster making more than $6 million per year, but he's worth the money and probably worth even more than what he got. This season, he's hitting a cool 275 with 28 home runs and 117 RBIs. He's the face of this team and a solidified star player. But the thing is, these numbers aren't surprising because we expected him to be good. Everyone else is a different story. Next is 24-year-old rookie outfielder Stephen Kwan, who was drafted by Cleveland in round 5 of the 2018 draft. Unless you're a Cleveland fan, you didn't know who this guy was prior to this season, but he quickly made a name for himself. Quan is an old school baseball player. He doesn't hit home runs, he gets on base, he can steal bases, and it's hard to get him to swing and miss. He reached base 15 times in his first four career games, the most by any player in their first four games since 1901. He also went his first 116 pitches without a swing and miss, the longest streak to start a career since 2000. But these stats aren't some fluke numbers just to make him look good because he kept up his great play the entire season. He's currently batting 298 with a 373 on base percentage and 19 stolen bases, which are good for top 20 in the league in each category. He's also got the second lowest strikeout percentage in all of baseball, striking out only 9% of his at-bats. The Guardians are getting these numbers from a guy making $700,000 this season. This is the perfect example of a player who's not too flashy but gets the job done which every playoff team needs. The last hitter we'll look at is Andres Jimenez, a player who I like to describe as Steven Kwan with a little bit more power. Jimenez got traded to Cleveland from the Mets two years ago in the deal that sent Francisco Lindor to New York, a trade that can probably now be considered a win for both teams. Jimenez is 23 years old and making $706,000 this year. Not bad for a player who's batting 305 with a 377 on base percentage, 17 home runs, 19 stolen bases, and the American League starting shortstop in the All-Star game. Just like Quan, Jimenez seemingly came out of nowhere, but quickly established himself as a very well-known, very young, and very talented player in this league. Next, we're going to look at the pitching, and we'll start with Shane Bieber. Bieber is still only 27 years old, and he's making $6 million this year. He was one of the best pitchers in the league in 2020, winning Cy Young and the pitcher Triple Crown. This year, he's been doing his job, posting a 2.81 ERA, 
189 strikeouts, and a 12-8 and record. These numbers are very good. They're not spectacular, especially since we know what Bieber is capable of doing, but still worth well over $6 million per year. Next, we'll look at 24-year-old starting pitcher Tristan McKenzie. Similar to Bieber, his stats are not bad at all. His record stands at 11 and 11 with a 3.04 ERA and 180 strikeouts. I'm sure most 24 year old pitchers in the league would take these stats in a heartbeat. Luckily for McKenzie, his contract blows that of Quan and Jimenez out of the water because he's making over $707,000 this year. But all jokes aside, another absolute steal for this team. And lastly, we'll head to the bullpen where we'll find arguably the best closer in the league, Emmanuel Classe. Classe leads Major League Baseball in saves with 39. He's third in closer ERA with a 1.46, and he's got the second lowest whip for a closer at 0.75. Opponents are also batting only 171 against him this year. His salary this season, $1.5 million, yet another steal. So now you can see how the Guardians managed to pull this off. These six players all played a huge role in getting Cleveland into the postseason, and all six of them are playing better than the amount of money they're getting paid, which is the dream for every front office. On top of getting paid so little, these guys are babies compared to other teams in the league. Do they play in the worst division? Yes. Would they win any other division in this league? Probably not. But you have to give credit where it's due. History will tell you that this Cleveland team should not be good. They shouldn't be anywhere near the postseason, and they certainly should not have won this division. But they did. Because of stellar young talent obtained from the draft and trading, plus financial flexibility that will help them in years to come. So that wraps this one up. Thank you for watching the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.